All right, a commonly asked question is, where do I put the composter? All right, easiest answer is somewhere in between sunny and shady. Um, so hopefully you have that. You don't want it necessarily full sun or full shade, but somewhere in between is perfect. Um, and you want to have it somewhere that's convenient. You want to be able to add material, whether it's the spring, summer, or fall, but also in the winter, so it's not too far away. Um, certainly feel free to collect some buckets and go, you know, make shorter or smaller trips out to the compost pile in the middle of the winter, but definitely do so. So um, I'm going to quickly assemble the composter again. Again, all we're doing is we're lining up the arrow over the door. We're finding the arrow in the top half. Take the lid off. Line up those arrows. Okay. Work your way around. Oh, nice and quick. Okay, great. Then I'm going to put the lid back on. And again, any handle lined up with the arrow, you can open it from any direction, turn it, and it's locked. Okay, so um, you can see over here, this is where I have my setup. I've got my geo bin filled with uh, leaves, so every time I add my fresh material into my compost bin, I have some dried material to fill into it, um, and my digesters to the left. Right next to the geo bin, I have a pile of, it's a mixture of grass clippings and leaves that I'm going to put into my geo bin later on today. My, I, my neighbor just cut his lawn and he set me up with some good material to add to my composter. Okay, so now that the composter is assembled, we're going to find a nice spot in the backyard. You'll see I already have mine set up over there. But I'm going to, I'm going to basically show you where I would put the composter and how I would get the compost started. Okay, so again, I'm finding a spot that I find convenient to me to get to the composter. Um, so let's pretend we're setting it up right here. The door is going to obviously go over there. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to have a layer of maybe some straw, some twiggy material to kind of allow the air to flow in the bin. So I've cut some of the grasses that I've got growing just as an example, but twiggy material, anything like that, that's going to give it a little bit of a, an elevation off the ground so air can flow. Um, and then basically we're doing layering. We're doing one part green, three parts brown. One part green, three parts brown. So in an ideal scenario, you've got lots of brown material and you've got lots of green material. Um, it's fall right now, so my grass clippings include a lot of leaves, which are actually a perfect combination. And right now it's a really good way to get started. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add the grass clippings. Um, and then I'm going to add leaves, about a, one, a three to one ratio, okay? And then I'm going to add grass clippings, and then I'm going to add leaves. And you can keep going that way as long as you want. Um, add some moisture to it, a garden hose, a bucket. You want to keep it nice and moist like a wrung out sponge, just to kind of get it going a little bit. Um, and, uh, and keep it full. So I would use, uh, if I were to continue, I'd use all the material that's right here that's been uh, the fresh cut grass clipping. So that's the nitrogen source mis mixing with the dried leaves and you're gonna get compost very quickly. So if I had this available all year long, a big pile of grass clippings and leaves and I kept putting them in here and keeping them moist and turning them, you'd probably make compost in six weeks, eight weeks, but unfortunately most people don't have a big pile of grass clippings and a big pile of dried leaves all year long. So for normal people, you're probably looking at closer to like four months, five months to make compost. So keep that in mind. The more material you have in here, the faster you're going to make compost. Uh, if you can keep it nice and moist and aerated, you're going to keep the microbes alive. You're going to make compost faster. If you keep the twiggy material out and the bulky stuff like ears of corn and stalks of broccoli, you keep that out, you're going to make faster compost. Or compost. So you know, a little bit of trial and error. You may find that, um, you know, you're pulling things out of here that aren't breaking down very quickly, so maybe you'll stop putting them in there. But I highly recommend having a source of dried material near your composter, so when you go out and you dump your kitchen scraps in here, you've got a source for the dried material to cover it. 
if you aren't able to accumulate or you're starting your pile and it's already the spring or summer and you've already done your spring cleanup, you can dry out leaves. Dried leaves will become a dried material. You could take paper products, junk mail, newspaper, cardboard, cereal boxes, things like that. Kind of soak it in water, rip it up a little bit and put it in here. That can be a, a carbon source. So. Um, you know, it may take a season or two to line up your ingredients, but an ideal setup would be something like this, again, where you're opening up your composter, you're dumping in food scraps, you're taking dried material, and you're covering it. Um, again, the more material you have in here, the more surface area, the more chopped up it is, the faster you're gonna make compost. So uh, fill it up, put it in a nice convenient spot, and um, happy composting, thanks.